Welcome to another episode of Celtics Talks Radio. I am your host, Kevin Parenting Turner, aka the Brown Bostonian. And we are here with another episode. It's been a great week for Celtics fans. We'll get into all of that. The league, it's been a lot of things happening, but we have a special guest. We have a special guest, and I am going to throw it to. Oh. Hold on. And we're going to throw it to my man. His name is Resto from Celtics Nation. Hold on. You might have some audio difficulties right now as we get that figured out we'll talk where you can find us at celtics talks radio c3 l-t-i-c-s talk radio and we are trying to figure out how to get resto from celtics nation you see him on your screen right now we'll figure it out but until we get that started I'm your host, Kevin Payton Turner. You can follow us on Twitter, follow us on, I mean, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Facebook, our uh, group chat. It's C3LTICS Talk Radio. And we are here. Can you hear us? Now I can hear you, baby. I looked out and came right back in. I knew that that was going to do it. Perfect. We got Resto from Celtics Nation. How you doing? Tough, rough rough beginning, but we here. We here. We here. We here. here. (laughs) How you doing? I'm fantastic, God. How are you? I'm good, man. I can't complain. I'm a Celtics fan, and I feel good as a Celtics fan this week. Right. 51 oh. wins? We, yeah. We, we, yeah. Yeah, we good. We got nothing to complain about. We we in the playoffs, too. We in the playoffs. Yeah, well, we want- clinched that. We're fine. We're going to be fine, guys. I, I want to talk about the, the – the, after the West Coast trip, we went 3-2 and two on the road on the West Coast trip. Did all right. I'm not too happy about it, but whatever. But yeah, now we're on a two-game winning streak. Last night, the Celtics smoked the Indiana Pacers, 120-95. How do you feel about it? What did you see? It was a fantastic game. They came out the gate. Both teams came out the gate with Mm -hmm. a lot of energy, which was awesome. It almost felt like the first game after an all-star break where everybody was just ready to go. Teams are locked. They look good. We looked hungry. It's always a different team when Time Lord's healthy and on the floor, though, so that's what they look like. Yo, I, I, I've been saying this. I don't know if you've been following us. I've been saying it all the time. Even when we had CJ, your partner, on here, I've been saying it. Robert Williams, he came back past two games. He, he hasn't played too many minutes, but he looks healthy. He's caught a, he caught a lot from Derek White. He's, he got eight rebounds last night. He, he's, been, he's been huge, and I think he opens things up, especially coming off the bench. How do you feel about him coming off the bench rather than not starting? The real, It's like everybody comes off the bench except for, like, three players, right? It's like if you're, if you're Tatum – um smart and brown you're safe you're gonna start everybody else should be waiting to come off the bench at some point because the rotations are different and i, mm. I kind of like that but with time lord coming off the bench he's so good you kind of it's a win-win right like if he's if he's in your starting lineup there's very few people at his position that can stop him from doing anything right and then if he comes off the bench it's your secondary player okay good luck <laughs> so it's it's such a good chess move, it's, but it's also reflective of how deep we are as a team because if he comes off the bench, who's starting? And are they handling their business against another starter? So I, I absolutely love it. It was such a good look. We're good. So you're not worried about it in the playoffs. Like, if we go up against Philly, you don't care if Rob Williams comes off the bench. We own Philly. When Like, I don't know Philly. Who's Philly? Okay. I love Joel. Let me get this. Let me put it on the record. I love Joel Embiid's game. Yeah. I, I think... He's afraid of us. He says it. We There's no rivalry here. We always spank him. I'm not worried about Joel Embiid. He doesn't have that Jimmy Butler killer mindset. If Jimmy Butler was on that team, I'd be very worried about who started. <laughs> but I'm not worried about, like, I love Embiid. I'm just not worried about Philly for some reason. I, I look at them and I'm like, what have you done? I respect it. So you, you you like Derek White. He's been starting. He's been great. He scored 22 points last night. He, he's he been good. He's a little undersized, though. And, like, Al Horford as the starting big man, I love him. If he can keep up his energy, he's a, he's a vet. So I'm that's the only thing that I'm worried about. I'm not worried about skill set. I'm just worried about him keeping it up, like, for the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. But do you think Derek White and having Al Horford as the only big man there, that's key. That's perfect. I think it's good because the league has all has been small the last five, six, seven years, almost ten years. It's a smaller league, right? Yeah. And even even before that, you look at somebody like 
um, Dave Cowens and how he played. He was undersized for his position, but the dude was an MVP, finished in top five MVP votes like five years in a row, right? He started that small, he, he was able to start that small ball movement even way back then, pulling centers and power forwards away from the hoop to leave the lanes open. And he was still a bucket. With that said, when you have players that do that same thing, like Al Horford and Derek White, who can pull your bigs away from the paint, you're, you're leaving room for Jalen and Jason to work. I like it. On Al Horford being a vet, we have to start looking at vets differently because science and technology has advanced so much that people athletes aren't aging like they were when we were younger, right? Mm -hmm. Like that we got to see Vince Carter do 20 years, and but at the end, he was a little slower. That was probably the tail end of athletes doing that. Now you're going to see dudes get to their 20th year and probably still be balling a la LeBron James. He, that's that's and uh, it's an enigma right now. Right. Yeah. It's not the it's the it's the exception, not the rule. But then you're kind of seeing it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Al Horford's not aging like Dirk Nowitzki aged. Dirk was nice. Dirk he was, was not, fantastic. He was nice. He was, the, <laughs> he was fantastic. But Al Horford isn't aging. At that speed, he's going to be able to play two or three more years because of the way he plays. He's just – science and technology has changed. So players like Al Horford are going to be able to age gracefully. and You'll see that as we go along. Derek White is such a versatile – what is he? Is he a point? Is he a really tall shooting guard? Is he your three? Is he a small four? No, like he can do it all. He can run mm -hmm. the offense. He can, he can make the right play. He can catch and shoot. He can shoot off the dribble. Um, he very rarely makes the wrong play. Thank God for him being in Popovich's system, right? I I don't mind him at the floor. I don't think it's a permanent solution, but you it's don't. a okay. it's a good. Um, what was it? The the Warriors had that lineup of death. What was it? The they had I forget what they called it, but everybody was small, and small I think ball? Harrison Barnes was their center. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, right. th that's the thing about they didn't. We don't have a Steph Curry. No, no. <laughs> we oh my we don't, God. A, we don't have a Clay. We don't have a Steph Curry. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Derek White. He's huge, and I think him starting is like good. I think with, with Robin Williams and Al Horford there, Al Horford. He's not really a, a big. He can shoot. He can take off the dribble. He can do everything, and he takes up space in the paint. I think with Robin Williams, he runs the floor. He's a rim protector. Like he forces guys to. Shoot threes, and with that, because you have Jason Tatum, who's what six eight, six seven, and like yeah. tall guards that the Celtics have. You saw it last night; the Pacers didn't shoot well from three because when you have big guys in the paint, it forces them to shoot. And we already have tall, gu great guards that great perimeter get... defenders. Yeah, the the Indiana Pacers are a smaller team when you look at it, right? Yeah. Like, they, yeah, like they have one really great size player, in Miles Turner, who's just fantastic, and I've always liked. Um, and I always thought that, like, that's who time. If I was on the Celtics staff, I'd be like, you see, time work. You see, Miles? That's kind of what you want to be like. You go get them buckets on um, the mid range if you can and get mm -hmm. some hustle plays and you'll be fine. He's much more athletic. But yeah, the Pacers are smaller. I've been seeing this since Danny was um, our GM, right? He always wanted long, tall guys who are versatile defenders that can rotate between one and four and guard everybody. Mm -hmm. it, it, he. He he didn't get to see that dream through, <laughs> but he set it up just perfectly, bro. Because we got Jalen, Jason, we got Derek. White. I mean, that was that was uh, Brad, but Derek White is part of that ideology. You want guys who can rotate between that, and they'll be fine. You're right. Rob Williams is a rim protector like we haven't had in years. So it's it's a different ball game and a different team when you have somebody who can send you into the stands. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna ask this because we're staying on this week, all right? We're gonna stay on recent. What do you think of this this Jalen Brown comments he made in the ringer, um, <laughs> in the New York Times saying, you know, hopefully he stays a Celtic. We will see. You know, what do you, what what's, what do you take from it? I absolutely first and foremost first and foremost love Jalen Brown. I am uh, uh, what I like to I like to consider myself somebody who is in tune with righteousness, right? And when Jalen came to the team, it was something that he was expressing from the jump. And we very, very rarely have athletes, um, especially for the Boston Celtics, outside of like Bill Russell, that want to speak out on social issues. And um, it's something that I'm very much into. So when I saw Jalen coming, I thought, oh, this is beautiful. This is fantastic. This guy, they actually, in the scouting reports, were scared, teams were scared to draft him because they said he's too intelligent. And that he's might see that basketball is a, a minor thing to him in a couple of years. With that said, that didn't stop me from loving him. I wanted that. I can see myself 
in Jalen and his personality. I thought that those comments have always been the comments that he made recently have that's always been how he's felt about life. Mm -hmm. That's right in tune with Jalen Brown's just persona and his way of being and how he is, right? I hurt as a Celtics fan when I hear that the description of Celtics fans is one that borders the line of intolerable, that we're not focused so much on basketball and basketball, what's happening between the lines that we judge our players by what they do outside of the lines. That that hurts. But I know that the diversity of Celtics fans is much bigger than what people are trying to perceive. And I don't think Jalen Brown was trying to lean into the fact that there's only a certain type of fan base, Celtics Nation. He very clearly said it's a small percentage. And I think that people focused on that and didn't focus on anything else, right? Mm -hmm. I love our players and I want them to always express themselves. Um, Marcus wrote a even Marcus had an even more scorching article a couple of years ago that he wrote for Players Tribune that really like hurt me because of hurt me based on the experience that he had. Right. I didn't think that that was something that our players would go through. Mm -hmm. But hearing Jalen echo those comments again, kind of, um, I think it's time for Celtics Nation to wake up. Right. Like Celtics fans need to wake up. This is the perception that people believe of us. I think that the media is completely wrong, but. We need to do our part to be better. I want, I hope he stays with us for life. For life, Lord Jesus. Um, because I think that we don't, again, we, I have not seen a player be such, so outspoken on social issues like Jalen Brown in a Celtics uniform since I feel like Bill Russell and God rest his soul. I want that man to keep on expressing himself. I think that Celtics fans need to hear him. It's important. I agree. I think even the year at the bubble where he was, you know, with he they had the like the player meeting he was like listen we can't just go back to basketball and just think we can just go back to basketball and not because nothing will happen you know mm -hmm. we got to do something and i think in my opinion as a kid who grew up in boston and i've witnessed red sox championships i witnessed patriots championships i witnessed the celtics championship the parades and the banners and I, all i can say is i do think it's unfair, but anytime you haven't won a championship yet, it gets tough in some ways of like, you know, like we love Tom Brady. He can do whatever he wants. We don't care. He won six. We don't care. <laughs> we don't care. I love Brady. Like, I'm not saying that because he hasn't won that it negates it. I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying like it shouldn't matter. But in this in the in the the culture that we have here, it's kind of like we do kind of plays basketball on players and it's like i think some of it was the Kyrie issue like when he was here we didn't have he didn't do the expectations that we had as a team of him and so when he was trying to do all this other stuff it's like as as fans as hmm. boston fans who are used to championships it's like yo can we get a championship first and like i never even looked at it like that that's, how, never, that's how i feel that's no. that's a good way of looking at it because it's very accurate boston fans period, across the board, no matter what they are fans of. If you're not going to be a GOAT, just don't waste my time. Don't yeah. even bother. I'll casually watch you do what you do as you casually treat it casually. We yeah. don't do anything casually over here. We Everything is win or go home. So you, I, you're, I love your perspective because that does make me feel better. You're right. We're very hard on our teams and our players. And, and that's not to say that we don't have reasonable expectations nobody thought that the 2015 2016 celtics or the isaiah thomas celtics were going to win a championship we were happy with whatever they did mm -hmm. so, but with that said once they went to the conference finals we were like you better be going back next year or the year after or something mm -hmm. right so now you're right i didn't i've never looked at it like that like our expectations of everything that's done here is championship or bust and, yeah, and we do. We give people leeway. As soon as you win a championship, I mean, I don't think Jason Veritek has paid for a dinner in Boston. No, <laughs> two thousand and four. <laughs> no, right? I hope Johnny Damon and those boys haven't paid for a dinner. And I think that Pierce and Garnett and maybe even like Leon Poe. Leon Poe, if you're paying for dinners in Boston, let me know. We gonna start some trouble. You're right. We shouldn't have. You're right. If as soon as we win a champion, you win a championship in Boston, you're set for life. Do what you need to do, and the fans are gonna back you. Um, I 
with Jalen Brown, I know that he's like, it's much bigger than that, guys. It's so much bigger than that. I'm going to bring you your championship, but I want you to support me before that. And I'm like, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I mean, also, uh, speaking about championships, we got to get back to what, what, as we only have a few games left to the playoffs, yep. how do you feel about the Celtics chance of going back to the NBA finals? I've been watching basketball long enough to know what a championship team looks like in December, in February, and in April. Um, mm -hmm. Right? The league start, the seasons usually start October, November. You give them a grace period. And by December, you kind of know what you're looking at. February, after All Star break, after trade deadlines, you know what you're looking at. April, everybody's acclimated. You know what you're looking at. I know what I'm looking at. This is a team that can win a championship. Mm -hmm. um, they, who's, it, who's standing in our way? I mean, I don't see too many teams standing in our way that we can't beat. We've beaten everybody we're supposed to beat. Um, I They look like a championship team to me. The only thing that I think I might, no, I'm not even worried about that. Now that I'm thinking about it, I thought that the jitters might creep up on them again, but they've been here. They've done it. They're so bored with the regular season. That's another reason why I'm, I know that I'm looking at a championship team that, yeah, a championship team would go 73 and nine, right? But does that really matter when you get to the finals if you lose to LeBron James in six <laughs> or in yeah. seven, yeah. right? So I'm yeah. not too worried about what they're looking like right now because I've seen them every single time they were supposed to show up, they've shown up. They're going to head into the playoffs and they're, gonna, they're, they're a veteran team at this point, right? Where veteran teams towards the end of the season are just like, can we get to round one, please? Mm-hmm. That's what you're seeing right now. They're a veteran team that's just like, bro, I really don't care. I want to prove to you that when the games matter, this is going to be lights out. Tonight was a Last night was a game that mattered. And you can see what happened. It was lights out. Mm. They're going to be fine. I maybe fear Milwaukee a little bit because Giannis is, is not an easy player to guard. But we've gotten them more than they've gotten us, I feel, especially when games matter. And I'm not afraid of Chris Middleton. He's not Michael Jordan, bro. I don't know what what where people are like, oh, Chris Middleton, Chris Middleton, Chris Middleton. Chris he, was Middleton all, he's a, he was an all. He was an all star. You can't you can't discredit Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton. Can't, Chris Middleton ain't stopping nobody on on the Celtics from scoring. That's seriously was he can put up 25. He's gonna get 35. I'm not, not worried it, about Chris Middleton at you're all. You're not afraid about Brooke Lopez? I think Brooke Lopez. That I think, guy is serious again. I think Brooke Lopez, <laughs> Lopez is nice. Like, he's my good. whole life, Brooke Lopez has been a good, has, was a great player. Then he was an okay player. Then he was a good player. And now all of a sudden he's back all, like to great. Like he's not, he, you got to factor in Brooke Lopez. The, those two towers over there in Milwaukee are something to be dealt with. Mm -hmm. But we, I've seen us pull up on them and be like, what's up? <laughs> what's up? Who's the, like, when it comes down to the come down, Giannis is a better shooter now, but when it comes down to the pressure moment, it's not, it's still not the same. He's still going to have to run to the hoop. Play, I've played basketball for a long time in my life, and I know that when it comes down to having to get a bucket, you don't go out of your way. You go right back to what you're supposed to do and what you know how to do best. That's yeah. run to the hoop, and we've built a wall like none other. So I'm not. This Celtics team should make it to the finals. I'd be very surprised if they didn't. Wow. You'd be very surprised. I'd be very surprised. They're locked in. They don't. Jason Tatum, you think Jason Tatum cares about winning the MVP right now? He he had his run. He said, you know what? No, Fine, whatever. So. I'm good. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about finals MVP. I'm not even worried about that. I just want the ring. And you got two dudes on the team, three, maybe four dudes on the team who know that they can win a finals MVP. Derek White could totally win a finals MVP. We go to a game seven and Marcus Smart has a game. He can win a finals MVP, Cedric Maxwell style. You have Jalen and Jason who know that if they play well, they're Kevin Garnett and Paul Piercing. It's either one of those guys that's going to win it. The accolades don't matter to them. All they want is one ring and they'll be happy. We want six. I'd be very surprised if the Celtics didn't make it to the finals. I really would. You know, we're, I'm worried about Marcus Smart a little bit. He doesn't mm. look he doesn't look a hundred percent to me. Healthy? Yeah, he doesn't look he hasn't looked like full speed, full running. He hasn't seen like going to the basket with he, he looks more crafty. And typically, mm -hmm. like in basketball, when you're when you're more crafty, it's kind of like cause you're trying to make up for something. He doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be completely healthy shooting wise as well, or taking on like the best um ball handler on the other side. He's like he doesn't look too healthy. What do you think about him? He's Later. had some moments. I've shot some reels <laughs> recently, and in those reels, Marcus is like, I have like three or four where Marcus is getting hurt. And I'm like, damn, did I not see that while I shot that? Dude, I hope he's okay. 
Mm-hmm. He's been getting dinged up. Um, I'm worried about him in the sense that he's he's playing through injury. Everybody is at this point at yeah. this late in the season. Um, I'm not worried as a team because we got Brogdon and we do have White, both of who are great shooters, great ball handlers, and great defenders. So um, my favorite player, my my top three Celtics include Marcus Smart. Like, I, I love Marcus Smart. I love basketball players that want to play defense. And he's one of the best ball-on defenders I've seen myself personally in a Celtics uniform. Just because I've only been watching since, like, 01, right? I didn't get to see Dennis Johnson. I didn't get to see DJ attack people. Um, mm-hmm. I, I didn't get to see the great defenders of, of Celtics lore do what they do. I got to see Marcus. It was Rondo. It was Tony Allen. It was Marcus. Those are the guys that I saw defend like crazy. Marcus... Just I've seen him do it longer, in my opinion. I've seen him go through ups and downs. If he's injured right now, I could Joe rest that man. We don't need him to play right now. <laughs> We're fine. Mm-hmm. Um, we need him for the playoffs though, because um, having that three headed that three headed monster of Derek White, Malcolm Brogdon, and Marcus Smart to defend the perimeter is I don't know too many other. I mean, the best teams have that many defenders that they can put on people. You could throw Drew Holiday out there with two other dudes who can guard the ball, right? Mm-hmm. We need that, that to, to be that dynamic. Um, the, the key with the Celtics is that they're so deep. Once you start losing players, you start to lose depth. So if Marcus is not healthy, we're losing a bit of depth there. But on the other side of that coin, I think that will be okay as an organization because we've done so well with placing players in the right place. Brogdon, and White can defend the lights out, so we're fine. You know, as you get into the playoffs, you only really play eight players. So who yeah. do you th- who do you think is 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 getting taken out in the playoffs? Of this like, rotation, ooh, that's a good question. Yeah, right. So because we got the five starters, but the five starters are always so you really only have the three the three rotation guys, Horford and White, right? Mm-hmm. And you get Brogdon, Time Lord. Um, we're at seven. Who's the next rotation? You're gonna get Hauser. You think Hauser? You think he gets the final Hauser spot? Has to be in the mix. He's a defensive liability, but he's not an unwilling defender. There's a difference. Um, and I hate to knock Kyrie because I, I and I know Celtics fans are probably like 50-50 with this. I'll be on the I'll, I'll come on the record. I absolutely loved Kyrie Irving while he was here. I excused everything that he did. I said, "No, nah, he's never leaving." What are you talking about? He did a commercial <laughs> with his dad in the garden. That means he's never leaving, bro. Stop. Um, <laughs> I love Kyrie Irving. I don't want to knock him in the sense that I, I'm going to say this, though. He's an unwilling defender most mm-hmm. of the time up and down the court. Sam Hauser is not that. Sam Hauser is a very willing defender. He's a mm-hmm. He wants to stay in front of people. He's going to give his most effort. He's not too worried about fouling you. If he has to foul, well, too bad. I'm going to go get six more points in the next two possessions right now and make up for that. We'll be cool. Um, so he should make the rotation plus – What's the NBA now? It's threes, layups, and free throws. Wait, and hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I think yeah. if, what about Grant Williams? I I mean somebody's gotta, gotta be out of the rotation. Nah, Grant Williams is not <laughs> no, out the rotation. Know he you shot might, threes last I'm night. I'm forgetting Grant Williams. You forgot Grant. <laughs> I'm forgetting Grant. I completely forgot Grant. If I had to choose between the two, Grant's gonna be in the rotation because he's a far better defender. I'm not knocking you, Sam Hauser. I love you. You're, you're, I think you're the better shooter between the two. I think mm-hmm. he's actually got the best, most natural shot on the team. If you just watch his catch yeah. and release, it's the most For natural sure. shot I've seen in the uniform in the Celtics uniform in a while. You're mm-hmm. right. I forgot about Grant. Grant's in. If I have to play eight and Sam Hauser has to be out, yeah, man. Peyton Pritchard too. Like I'm sorry, Peyton. I love you. I love short players. Man. They're the yeah. best. And Mike, Mike Muscala and um. Blake. I love Mike Muscala too. He's another great. He's a good defender. He's a good. He's good rotationally on defense. If he gets caught on the perimeter with a short guard, he's gonna have to do some work, which is why you don't play him too much. But he's a he's a he's a strong body, a good rebounder, and he's wet. You hit the three if you leave him open. Like yeah. that's not somebody you want to leave open. The guy can play ball. But you're right. If we, I don't understand why we only do eight. Why do the rotations shorten so much? 
Because you can't you can't play around in the playoffs. It's only forty eight like, minutes. Like you can't play around. Like, I've been watching basketball so long, and I'm like, dude, this guy played during the regular season. What do you mean you're not gonna play him during the playoffs? Like play him. Because guy, the starter's gonna play like forty minutes during the playoffs. So it's like there's there's only room for like two or three guys off the bench. Mm-hmm. So someone's gotta sit. Someone's gonna sit out for most of the games unless there's a blowout. See, so it's it, like it seems this is like why I say this is why I say don't worry about right now. I mean, yeah, if they if they if they had only won 45 games, we should be worried. Like, oh wow, we might not make it out the second. But this is why I'm saying let's not worry about this team. They look a little bored. They're also not playing the rotation that they want to play with the level mm-hmm. of intensity that they want to play it at. So one that's we all know the playoffs are a different beast. It's a whole different thing. Watching mm-hmm. a game in June is different than watching a game in January. So uh, let's let's go to the finals. You said there should be no reason why they don't make it to the finals. They, they make it to the finals. Who don't you want to see in the West? Is there anyone you don't want to see in the West? I'm I'm starting it. I'm trying to think. Was it Memphis? <laughs> nah, <laughs> no, nah, no chance. Oh my God, let's not even go there. Let's just stop. <laughs> um, you know, secretly, I'll start with the team that I'm I'm least I'm least most worried about. I don't want to see Los Angeles. I don't want to see the Lakers. Really? I do not want to see LeBron get to a final. I don't want to see that team in the finals. I don't know why, why I'm like, if they make it, I don't see I don't see them want I don't know why. That'd be that'd be a seven game series for some weird reason until Anthony Davis gets hurt in game two and then we sweep them. <laughs> but I don't from the bottom up, I don't want to see the Lakers. Why? Because I've seen LeBron James do it to us enough times. I've seen LeBron step into the garden and absolutely hurt us and hurt my feelings. Time after time again, I've seen oh, LeBron yeah. smack me in the face. Granted, those teams weren't these teams. He beat up on Isaiah Thomas and the boys a bunch of times. He got to Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett like maybe once, right, towards the tail end of their, their stint. Mm-hmm. But I've seen him still come in and smack us around a lot. I don't want to see LeBron. He hurts my feelings. I don't want to see the Golden State Warriors either. Me either. He hurt my feelings. Steph hurt my feelings last year. Like, my crew is named Sleepless in New England, and he just kept doing this, and I'm like, is that to me? Like, yeah, like oh, bad. man, that hurts. So I don't want to see stuff. From the teams that are actually good in the West. Wait, time out. Time out. What if Wiggins doesn't come back? Do you still do you still feel that same way? Because we don't know. We don't know if he'll come back. He's He's got some personal stuff going on, huh? He does. He does. That's despic- if, if it's what I heard is true, that's despicable. Andrew Wiggins, I send you all my love and positive energy. I hope you make it through that, Lord, because that's a very serious situation. If he does come back, I still don't see him being in the mindset to ball out. Um, but then again, this is what athletes do. They take tragedy that might be happening off court. They focus off of it. We've seen Isaiah Thomas lose his sister and come in and give him 50, right? Like we've seen him do some magical things. So I could see him fueling up and, and being a problem. If he comes back, he's a problem. If he doesn't come back, it's still Steph. It's still Steph, Steph Curry is scary. So you're still worried? Even if, I'm even still if worried can... about Steph Curry. And wow. also, they're schematically really good, right? Like, they scheme really, really well. And Draymond is, defensively, he's a in super intelligent basketball player when it comes to playing defense and running an offense. He might average four points a game. I don't care. That's a dangerous basketball player. I don't want to see the Golden State Warriors from the great teams that are in the West – um, maybe Denver, cause Jokic, Jokic is different. Um, I don't understand how he's that good. I don't want to see him, and I don't want to see Luca. That's you it. The, you don't want to see the Mavericks. I don't want to see Luca in the finals. No, I don't want to see what he does in the final. I don't want to see what he does in a final against us. Wow. I do not want to see him in a final against us. That guy apparently turns it on really big when the lights are on really oh, he big. Does. And how many, he does. Has he, how many times has he hit us with a game winner before, right? I think once. I, I think, think once. This season, yeah. yeah, I don't want to see that guy do that to me again in the playoffs when things matter. That guy's scary in the playoffs. That's like if Dame Lillard had a decent team. I don't want to see him in the finals. So who's, who's your top three? Top three teams? In the, in the West that you don't like. In the West, like, I don't want to see Denver. I don't want to see the Clippers because I think that they could be a problem. Mm, I don't think so. I, I think, that think, they, so. Yeah, think that they could be a problem. I don't – the West is not the West anymore, is it? No, the it's West not. The West ain't San Antonio, Dallas, 
um, Los Angeles with Cole Wright. It ain't like that. And it ain't wa- it ain't walking into Phoenix with Amari Stoudemire catching 50 lobs above your head um, and Sean Marion doing that to you all night. Um, Phoenix? The West, the West ain't the West anymore. Phoenix? Um, Phoenix? They they don't have any depth and they can't defend. Right? They gave away Mikel Bridges and they gave away Cam John right Cam Johnson and they it just they look like a different team. They look like a completely different team to me. It doesn't they don't look as scary. They looked scary before because they were deep and you didn't know who to focus on. Now you can just they got two snipers, but one of their snipers is absolutely nobody. I'm not worried about Kevin Durant ever because he's always just gonna get injured. He's three close part two. <laughs> that dude's never healthy. Uh, I, I Let's guess. call it what it is. That dude I, is never healthy. I, I can see that. I can see that. We got a question from Chris Kelly. If we go to the finals and win, who's going to be the finals MVP? Tatum or Brown? Who do you think? I, I, ooh. I got Tatum. We been, we haven't talked about Tatum this whole episode, which is which is kind of crazy because he's the which... he's the he's the best. Damn it. Um, I don't know who because you see. Tatum can go on. Jalen Brown is extremely consistent, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's extremely consistent on both ends of the floor. So I can see him being consistent throughout a playoff series and getting that. But then Tatum's the one that has the potential to give you 60. Not that Tat- not that Brown doesn't can't go off of 50 or 60, but mm-hmm. we've seen Tatum do it a bunch. We've seen him give him a bunch of 50 point games. So we're not, if in a game seven or in three games, Tatum goes off for 50, you have a debate on your hands as yeah. to, if in six games we win it, Tatum had 50 and two, or maybe had 45, and Brown maybe averaged 20, and Brown averaged 30 or 28 with a solid line, and he defended the other team's best defender. That's a hard debate. If I'm, if who do I want to win the finals MVP? Marcus Smart. <laughs> That's who I want to win it. So that way there's no debate Mm-mm. because it's, like there's no problem here. Mm-hmm. If Marcus Smart wins it, boy. I'm, I'll be solidified. It'll be more a thing for me because then I'll look at people and be like, I told you that boy was nasty. Don't trade him. Um, I think it'll be Tatum because of, I don't know. I think that Tatum has the bigger uh, opportunity to have a bigger point explosion, which is what people see. I also go on the other side and just be, you know, if it comes down to the vote, people see Tatum more. People are more familiar with Jason Tatum. People see Tatum more. So I think that it comes, it sometimes comes down to that. I think what you said with the point explosion. Not all, not all scorers are equal, right? Like Kawhi yeah. Leonard, Kawhi Leonard could drop forty, but there'll be no highlights on ESPN. No. <laughs> you know, but or like the Joker, he's amazing, but like it's mostly his passes that will get the that'll make a highlight real. Mm-hmm. It's like it's kind of the same thing with Jalen Brown. Also, although we have seen him poster people, and mm-hmm. we have seen him cross up people, but Tatum is kind of like when he scores, everything kind of looks like a highlight reel. Yes, it does. Way, whether it's the three, whether it's a step back three, a crossover into a three, you know, a, a euro step around two defenders, like it just every basket just looks more. It's sexy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's the only way I can describe it. When you watch, when you're younger, you watch players. Um, you when you first start watching basketball, the last thing you're worried about is efficiency. What's the most effective way <laughs> to get a, a bucket? That's the a fact. first things that pop out are what's the most sexy thing. So when you're first starting with, as you grow older, you, um, you let go of what's sexy, but you keep on, you you keep it there because it still looks good, right? Like a good up and under jelly looks good, even though that's not effective. Just lay it up off the backboard. But, you know, you got to be sexy sometimes. With that yeah. said, Jason Tatum's package of flyness, like those are the moves I want to replicate. But I know that at the end of the day, if I want to be a consistently great basketball player, I'd rather style my game after Jalen Brown on both ends of oh, the yeah. floor. Right, like that's just me personally. But I'll tell you what, if I hit a three pointer on a step back, I'm blowing the three. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That's where I'm at with that because Tatum has got a lot more, a lot more flash. He just does. It's just the way it is. Jalen yeah. Brown is very reserved, man, and I love that too. But it it does come down to that sometimes. It's what what looks really sexy. Yeah, especially to the M- uh, MVP. Like that's that like MVP isn't the most efficient. It's never nope. the most efficient. Never. It's <laughs> who. who Who's winning the most scoring a lot of buckets on a good team and it looks dope. It's got to look dope. Joker at the end of a game, he needs, let's say that you need two points at the end of a game to win a game and you're going to throw the ball into Joker. You know what he'll do? Mm-hmm. He'll bully ball the, the center and just push his way to the hoop and lay it in. Yeah. When are you going to see Tatum do that? 
Tatum's gonna take you to the hoop. He'll take you to the hoop for a winner. Maybe take you to the hoop for a dunk, like he did on Jared Allen to send it into overtime, right? But you know what he's really gonna do? He's gonna take you to the three. He's gonna dance on you. He's gonna hit you with a hezzy. He's gonna step back. He's gonna launch the three. He's gonna blow the kiss at the crowd. Yeah. And that just looks sexy. I'd rather do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, man. I want to win the game, but I'm yeah. not trying to post you up and bully ball you to win the game. I want to hit the three. I have, I have, a, I have a, one of my last questions, right? So last mm-hmm. season, I think the reason why they lost to the Warriors is because they had two seven-game series back-to-back, right? Okay. So to me, we, I think the first and second round need to be uh, sweeps or five or six games. Okay. This season... The, the Celtics have struggled against the Knicks and the Nets and, like, a couple other teams. Who, one, why do you think they struggle against those teams? And, two, who don't you really want to see in the first round of playoffs? Not that they will lose, yeah. but that you don't want them to see them go into six games. You want um, a sweep. The reason he they, they didn't play well, look at, the, look at how they played against the Brooklyn Nets before the trades, and then look at how they played against the Brooklyn Nets after the trade. And the personnel on the Brooklyn Nets was not better after, in my opinion, than before. They have more willing players that are willing to play as a team. Now the Brooklyn Nets do. But the names, again, aren't as sexy. So when the Celtics walk into their gym, they're not fearing them. They're just like, whatever, bro. This doesn't mean anything to me because who's on the other side of the floor? Mikel Bridges? And then Bridges gives them like 30. And then you're like, oh, we are supposed to respect him? Mm-hmm. Damn. And then they had the other dude. What's the other dude that was going off for 30? On the, I can't believe I forgot his name. I think his name was Cam something as well on the Brooklyn Nets. You walk into the gym and you just don't respect them. There's no history there. So that's mm-hmm. one. And the Knicks were kind of the same way. They're good now. But when were they good before? Like, there's no respect there. And they, they might respect Julius Randle. They might respect Jalen Brunson. But nobody, nobody on the Celtics is looking at them like a real legitimate threat. So... They walk into the gym and they underestimate them and then those teams sneak up on them and then you're like, oh, man, I was supposed to play 48 minutes against you, huh? Yeah, all right, next time. Out of those two teams, I don't want to see the Knicks. The Knicks have the better personnel. Um, they have they have camaraderie, right? Brunson um, and Josh Hart play together in college. So they have way, they have a lot of camaraderie there, right? That's team chemistry. You had Julius Randle, who's one of the last players in the league that played with Kobe Bryant, but actually listened to Kobe Bryant and took heed of what he was saying. Mm-hmm. So that's not somebody I want to see in a moment that you want. You need to win, right? Then that New York crowd is not easy. That Ma- Madison Square Garden is not a is not an easy place to go play if the crowd is riled up, and they actually love their team this year. And James Dolan has stood out of the spotlight, right? Mm-hmm. He hasn't he hasn't conflicted with them in a couple of years, and now you have like this unity between Knicks fans and the players, and I don't want to see that. I'm not trying to see that chemistry. I'm not worried about beating them, but it will go six. It will absolutely go six. Think I so. Don't wanna, I don't want to see Randall go off for 45 a night because he's gonna do it. You think so? You think he's gonna I, go six? I think I think Julius Randall Julius Randall is not effect is not an efficient player. But he is, he can be a problem because he's so he's so unorthodox. I don't like that he takes 27 dribbles though. Like, like, oh, I gotta set this up, I gotta set this up. Bucket. I don't want to see them anyway because the atmosphere. Do you know what it's like in 08 when we went down to Atlanta to play them in the first round? Who the hell were the Atlanta Hawks at that point? They were trash, bro. They were not good. That, that arena was empty all season long, and then the playoffs started and they were sold out. Yeah. They were a ruckus crowd. And it took us seven games to beat them. We almost got bounced in the first round of a championship year because the atmosphere around the team was that much better. The Knicks are a decent team. They're much better than those Hawks were. And their crowd's going to be 10 times better. I don't want to go in there, bro. <laughs> you, don't care about, you don't care about the Hawks? You don't care about the Hawks? Huh? Are you worried about the Hawks or no? No, because their best player is 6-1. <laughs> like, no, I'm not. They yeah. don't have any rim protection. Um. They don't I, I um their power forward, I forget his name. John I can't believe I forgot his name. Not, John Collins. I was about to say not John Collins, okay. I'd I'd like him over here, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want I don't love him too much. I like that he's that he's good on his feet. He bounces, the, you know, he can grab rebounds, he can make some plays. But I'm not DeJounte Murray's the best is like the best player on that team, but they're not running it through him, they're running it through Trey. And 
I don't see any team that has a player below 6-1 being their best player, their number one option being the team that wins the championship. I just don't see that. I can see that. I think CJ asked me who I see in the play I, in the finals. I say the Celtics and Warriors. I'm gonna be honest. I I agree with you. I I think the Warriors just like Steph Curry is just too crazy. But I I think it has to be with Andrew Wiggins. I don't think they make it without Andrew Wiggins because I do think they lose to the Grizzlies and the Mavs if they don't have Andrew Wiggins. I can see that they need another defender that can ball on defend. Right. Yes. Clay Clay has lost a step on the defensive end. Um. And that's okay. That's not, that's not knocking him. How many games is he that dude played, bro? Like, I know he's been injured, but how many deep playoff runs is it, have they had over the last 10 years? It's been a lot. So he's supposed to lose a step, but you're right. You need a younger body. And But they had so many players that are just like, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm going to defend. I'm going to play defense. I'm going to do the right things. And then um, they know that Steph is going to take them the rest of the way. And that they also... They just they have a lot of really good, willing team members on that team, and they have a fantastic scheme. As soon as they get into the playoffs, they scheme really well. And on top of that, they have historical and organizational standards. They win there. They draft well. They trade for players. They sign free agents. That I I'm a big believer in atmosphere and energy and culture. Um, and the culture at, at Golden State is almost second to none. Like they're they really know what they're doing over there. I don't want to see them in the finals. I'm tired of Steph Curry putting me to bed, bro. Like that's just. I do think I do think Jordan Poole, like the Draymond Green Jordan Poole thing, can like messed up something. Like I think if I see the if I see the Celtics and the Warriors in the finals again, I I kind of feel more confident about the Celtics than I did last year. I do too. I do too. I think that the Warriors are banged up. They're another year older. Um, Malcolm Brogdon. He changes huh? every Malcolm Brogdon changes Malcolm Brogdon a lot of things. Curry, like Malcolm, Malcolm Brogdon with Marcus Smart and Derek White. It's different this year. We have another body that's just willing to and then on the other end, Brogdon's gonna give you 16, 17. You leave him open 25, like easily. He's and he's so good at driving to the rim. Like that yeah. was a problem with us last year with that team at the finals, was going to the hoop, just launching threes like crazy. Malcolm will always put it on the floor first and then go to the hoop and then draw and then start shooting threes. I just don't want to see Steph. I don't want to see Jordan Poole. But I'll tell you what, if I was on the Celtics, I would continuously just be in somebody's ear about that. Be like, oh, man, getting punched in the face, but you're so used to that, aren't you? Like, (laughs) that would be me. I mean, oh, I think we forgot, right? I would, oh, man, I would, I'm happy that I'm not playing basketball because I would be saying some stuff. I'd be some Larry Bird stuff, some Honey Nut Cheerio stuff be coming out of my mouth against that team. I would be saying some stuff because I know that I would have to get in their head to try to beat them because they're good. That's a good team, bro. I know that their record doesn't show it. They're banged up a little bit, but I don't want to see teams like that in the playoffs because they'll sneak up on you. But Steph also, he's been having to like score 50 a night to, to get wins and he's going to keep having to do it as they keep trying to fight for seeds and play off the plan. So it's it, and play Thompson. Like you said, he's played a lot of games. So I, we'll see. I think it's going to be the roles kind of reversed when mm-hmm. the Celtics played two, seven game series in a row. When they got to the finals, they was exhausted. Whereas the Warriors was blowing out teams. I think it's going to be the, if they make it to the finals, it's going to be the, I think it's going to be the opposite. That's how I, I think, feel. I think if the Warriors see John Morant, and oh, Dylan Brooks, they're they not them. gonna want to see those boys right now. Not they at do all. not. I don't. I'm not scared of Memphis because I'm like, whatever, bro. Like, who do you got over there? But then again, Memphis is banged up too, right? They lost their starting center and their starting power forward. They lost two of their bigs. Yeah. Um, and they're out for the season. They're done. They ain't coming back. So, but then again, like the how dynamic Ja can be, and how in your head Dylan Brooks has been, mm-hmm. like. That's what I'm talking about, bro. If you can get into somebody's head consistently, you're going to affect their game. And Dylan Brooks has figured it out. So yeah. I don't think that yeah. Golden State wants to see Memphis. I don't think Golden State wants to see that. I don't Nobody wants to see Luka. I'm telling you, nobody wants to see Luka. No. No, nobody. no, no, no. Nobody wants to see LeBron James healthy either, charged up and motivated in the playoffs because he's going to do it to you. He's likely to beat you even if he has a bad team. He's done it before. I'm yeah. not... Yeah, I don't want to see Luka in the playoffs. I don't care about Kyrie, but I don't want to see Steph, and I don't want to see Braun. 
<laughs> you know, I don't care about the Lakers. I really don't. I don't care about the Lakers at all. I'm just LeBron has beat me up so bad. <laughs> me personally, just so many times. <laughs> I've been I went to a playoff game a couple of years ago when we went to to the conference finals in 2018, right? Where when Kyrie got hurt, I, I went to the conference finals against the Cavaliers. We mm-hmm. won game two. I was there for that. Braun had a 40 point triple double. Yeah. Like, yeah. I yeah. thought I imagined it. I was like, oh, he had a 40 point triple. Oh, no, I'm exaggerating. He maybe had like 32 with a triple double. And then I went back and looked at the game. He had like 46 with a triple double. It was dumb. And it was just oh, the whole night the announcer was like, LeBron James for yeah. three. <laughs> LeBron James to the free throw line. LeBron. Oh, Kyle Corver. Assist from LeBron James. Like the whole night, bro. So I've seen him do it to me in person. And yeah. I've seen him do it in the, on TV. I don't see that man no more. You got a point. He said in an interview before on his like um, his show, he was like, "Yo, every time I go to Boston, it's like the fans they on me, and every time I just want to, I just want to go off." <laughs> it's like, "Yo, look what y'all did." <laughs> no, nope, man. One time, him and Kyrie combined for like eighty points or something like that against the Celtics, and they need nobody scored any points except for LeBron and Kyrie in the fourth quarter. It was just them two back and forth scoring, and they they had like forty points apiece, and yeah. it was just scary. And I was like, "Yo." How are we even standing on the same floor as these guys? Like, our second best player is Jonas Jarebko. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Jonas Jarebko, by the way, I loved you. And I, loved your hair. <laughs> I loved your hair. I loved yeah. you. You were you were a gamer, bro. I freaking love Jonas Jarebko. I, w- I wanted him to win a championship in Golden State. That was the one year they lost. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I, it's gonna be interesting that when you, the East is interesting with the Cavs and the Heat mm-hmm. and it's the Bucks and 76ers. Although the Celtics, I think, do edge all of them out. Yeah, I think. In my opinion. I, I think. I think the Celtics do make it back. I think the West is so interesting because it's like if the Warriors make it, there's a little bit of worry. If the Grizzlies make it, I don't see them worrying. If nah. the Suns make it, I don't know. It's like the, the, it's yeah, weird. It's 50. It's 50 50 with the Suns because, uh, yeah, now that I think about it, seeing the Suns in the finals wouldn't be great, but it would be awesome for the sense that they're nowhere near as deep as us. As soon as their bench comes in, if KD ain't playing 85 minutes a game, if Booker and KD aren't on the floor most of the night, they're in trouble. But he could, with he, us. But KD, KD will play 48 minutes though. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Can he? I, I will think... he last that? Like, that's another, we got to continuously look at Kevin Durant the same way we look at Anthony Davis as a reason that their initials are KD and AD. Because <laughs> they're so similar in the sense that Kevin Durant's always hurt and you can't rely on Kevin Durant to be healthy. Mm-hmm. You can't. You just can't, bro. You just can't. But if, I, if, I'm, if I'm a GM, I take my chances. <laughs> yeah. I take my chances with KD. I don't know. But yeah. We, <laughs> KD, yes, or KD, no. I'd rather have KD. But if you're going KD or, or Jason Tatum, and this isn't even me oh, yeah. being biased, you take Jason Tatum every time. He's younger, yeah, he's healthier. He doesn't miss games. He doesn't have any – he's never had any Twitter beef with anybody. The dude's a, a great role model. Great, Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, KD's a boss, but there are other options that I'd rather take before him at the same position just because, I mean, the dude's – Always freaking hurt. I agree. I agree. Well, listen, Resto, it's been amazing. Um, can you tell people? Can you tell people where they find you at? Hopefully, we get you on the show again. You and CJ. If you, you want to find me yeah. anywhere, you can literally Google search me. You type in Hendrick Hernandez, and I'm the most popular Hendrick Hernandez that's ever existed. There are others. They're not as popular as me. They're my variants. They're my Marvel variants. I'm the Loki <laughs> that won. Right. Yeah. Um, you can type in Hendrick Hernandez or Hendrick Hernandez Resto into any search engine and I should pop up. But you can find me on Spotify for my music, which I do bring rap. I do rap about the Celtics quite often. Um, you can find me on Spotify, on iTunes, on Tidal, on anything. Hendrick Hernandez. You can find me on Facebook under Hendrick Hernandez Resto. That's the best place to find me, guys. Facebook, I'm popping on them, killing it. Um, you can follow you can follow me on any platform really under Hendrick Hernandez Resto. I'm on everything. Um, you can follow hashtag Celtics Nation on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and we're on TikTok as well, I believe. And you can see my stuff there. You can follow. Oh, I'm trying to think. Good boy, we everywhere. I'm yeah, everywhere. We everywhere. You can, <laughs> everywhere. You can check me on Celtics on Celtics Talk Radio now, right? And forever, Absolutely. we're gonna definitely be coming back. Um, 
I'm literally, I'm a Google search. You can find me anywhere. Google search Hendrick Hernandez or Hendrick Hernandez Resto and all the photography, the videography, um, the music, the content creation that I do will pop up. That's so basically we could find you anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. I'm everywhere because that's what it's like to be an artist in 2023. If you make music and you're not doing everything else, you're just kind of standing in front of a mic. All of this, everything that I do is to bring it right back to the music. If you guys like me, go check out my music. It's everywhere. I produce it myself. I write all my own lyrics. Obviously, I, I record my own music and then I mix it again after it's done. I release it myself. I do all the marketing and the promotion. Everything is done by me. There's nobody helping me except for the people who take my pictures. Shout out Ian Morgan, Matt De Silva, Emilio Torado. Shout out Bristol County Castro. Those are my brothers. They assist with those type of things and they assist with the music too. But for the most part, you're looking at the one and only. Well, that's perfect. And we'll definitely need, we definitely have to have you on the show. And CJ, we're trying to get both of you guys on well, the show. Well, we got Volk it on. Hell yeah. That's going to oh, be amazing. Man. Oh, man. Especially the playoffs. As we get into the playoffs, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be I'm crazy. I'm available, brother. You let me know and I'm here. Thank you. Salute. So that's another episode. Let me check us in. We're here every week. You know, Celtics Talk Radio. I'm your host, Kevin Parrington Turner. This, this is Resto from Celtics Nation. We'll see you again. Have a great weekend, my brother. Hope you have a great weekend. We'll see what happens Thank with the Celtics. You. Love. Go Celtics. Yes. Jalen Brown, we love you. We love, we love, we love you. <laughs> All right. Peace. Peace. Brown! Bring that smoke!